Don Blankenship and his crazy ads. The politicians are running a lot of crazy ads. They blew up the coal mine and then put me in prison. Now they're running the ads that say the coal mine blew up and I went to prison. There's no surprise there. It's not exactly I'm not a witch, but it sure is close. And then today he's releasing this one. Swamp Captain Mitch McConnell has created millions of jobs for China people. While doing so, Mitch has gotten rich. In fact, his China family has given him tens of millions of dollars. I will beat Joe Manchin and ditch cocaine Mitch for the sake of the kids. <laughs> yeah, to clarify, the cocaine part is, follow this, a reference to drugs found aboard a ship operated by the shipping company owned by the family of Mitch McConnell's wife. That was back in 2014. Blankenship is running for the GOP nomination for Senate in West Virginia. He would be, of course, if he gets the nomination, running against Democratic incumbent Joe Manchin. But he's mostly running against the top Republican in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, and apparently sees his path to victory as disparaging McConnell's wife and her family. So let me fill you in on McConnell's family tree. Elaine Chow was born in China. Her family came over when she was just eight years old. Here's how she described it to Dana Bash. As an adult looking back, and seeing my mother, who was only like 27, you know, how frightening it must have been for her as the only woman aboard this cargo ship. Is, is that right? With three young girls. I mean, that's pretty rough. Chow's family started a shipping company. She rose to become the first female Asian American to serve in a presidential cabinet under George W. Bush. She's now Trump's Secretary of Transportation. The same president, Blankenship, says he's running for the Senate to support. For young people, young women, I want to give them strength and hope and confidence. Just because there are no role models doesn't mean that you can't be the future role model that you now seek. Just pursue your life's passion. Do what you really love, and the way will unfold. So while she may have been born in China, it sure sounds like she's living the American dream to me, Don. I don't know about you. So you don't have to take my word for it, though, that Blankenship is a slightly fringe candidate. Just ask Donald Trump Jr. He weighed in on Twitter with this. I hate to lose, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and ask the people of West Virginia to make a wise decision and reject Blankenship. No more fumbles like Alabama. We need to win in November. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what should be more unsettling right now for Republicans. The fact that the party continues to attract candidates with huge political baggage in their past and like to throw fireballs every time they open their mouths, or that Donald Trump's son is starting to sound more and more like the Republican establishment. Let's discuss. Here with me now, Republican strategist and former communications director for Ted Cruz, Alice Stewart, and CNN political commentator, Democratic strategist and former Clinton White House aide, Keith Boykin. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Alice, is Don Blankenship the next Roy Moore, or is he the future of the Republican Party? Well, did you just read a House of Cards script, or is this really happening? No, that's, so this that, is was really happen All, that was truth and fact. I know okay. it's hard to come by these days, yeah. but that I actually yeah. did fact check. Yeah. Look, I think Don Jr. has a point here, because Blankenship's just not the right person for, for this race. Look, this is a key opportunity for the GOP to turn a state from blue to red, and we absolutely must do that. Blankenship got in a little bit too late. He's got a lot of baggage, and right now, Morsi and Jenkins are the, are the two front runners. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that uh, have the energy and the momentum. Democrat super PACs are taking out ads against them. It shows they're in a favorable position. And right now, Manchin, the Democrat, his poll numbers or approval ratings are going down. So this is a key opportunity. We can't have Blankenship in there, given uh, his history and baggage. And I do say Donald Trump Jr. has a point. <laughs> but Keith, do you applaud Donald Trump Jr., since I know you love you applaud him all the time, um, for weighing in on this and encouraging Republicans to choose a different path? Yes, I do. I think it's a smart move for Donald Trump Jr. It's, it's, you, the, the writing's on the wall. I mean, Don Blankenship, not only is he responsible for this coal mining accident where 29 people were killed, he went to prison for it. He doesn't even live in the district. He lives near, outside of Vegas. He's the worst possible candidate. And he's pr putting out these racist ads against Mitch McConnell and his family. I thought the contrast was interesting between the two little white babies he was holding up at the end and the China people who he was talking about in Mitch McConnell's family. I mean, that's blatant racism. Uh, and I Though think he says it is not because... He gets into, he apparently seems to like to make a differentiation between geography and race. Continue. Well, yeah. Well, 
And there's it, also hypocrisy because a guy has spent years and years in China. He actually yeah. wanted to become a Chinese citizen himself. The, the idea that Republicans would actually take him seriously is a reflection of just how the Republican Party has gone off the rails. Maybe not the establishment, but the rank and file. I mean, the, but I have to I have to put some of the blame on the establishment too because they're the people who gave us people like like Sarah Palin, which led to the Donald Trumps and the Don, and the Don Blankenships of the world. You can't put up these crazy but, candidates and and, just, and feed the red meat to the base and then and then accept no responsibility I for just, the consequences. But focus on the here and now. The fact that Mitch McConnell has now become such a boogeyman. I mean, well, in, in really, he really has become a boogeyman in West Virginia. At a debate, all three Republican candidates were asked to raise their hands if they supported Mitch uh, McConnell for majority leader, and none of them raised their hands. Well, the, they're not making this race about Mitch McConnell. They're making it about all... One thing that all three of them do agree on is they're going to raise their hand if they support Donald Trump. Donald Trump won that, that state by 42 points over Hillary Clinton. All three of them are embracing him. The, it's, not a, it's not a big leap to say that some people running this year will distance themselves from McConnell, but and there's no is, exception. But the, what we've discussed oh, since the 2016 election was, is this Donald Trump's Republican Party or, let's say, Mitch McConnell's Republican Party? I mean, that seems to be a real fight of what they're fighting about right now. Well, certainly. It, it varies state by state, and you're going to see in congressional races in the midterm yeah. and the Senate races, it's state by state. They're going to look at how the, the electorate, how they view Trump, how they view Washington. Clearly, draining the swamp is going to be a big key theme. But th in West Virginia right now, unequivocally, Donald Trump is popular. That's why we'll probably see him more than once between now and, and yeah. the, the election. And it, this it's is also going not to be like, more I mean, about listen, not just about Mitch McConnell. It's not just. It, it's also not like Nancy Pelosi is super popular when it comes to Democratic primaries. No, she's not terribly popular in the Democratic. Uh, <laughs> well, the Democrats actually don't have a prime. Uh, the Democrats actually. Don't